Good morning and welcome to the first Sunday of 2021. Who'd have ever thought we made it? <laughs> um, there were times where I wondered, but boy, I longed for the advent of a new year and I'm glad that we're here. That I also look back over 2020 and see God's hand in mercy and, and I have found joy in some little things, but God's promise has remained true and He is good and faithful. Above me is a plaque from Home Interior that I was given as a wedding gift on January the 4th, tomorrow, it will be Keith and I's 36th wedding anniversary. So that plaque has been hanging in my home for a very, very long time, no matter the wall that uh, I called home at that time. But I credit that verse for being why year number 36 has been made possible. Um, Joshua 24, verse 15, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's the... Uh, the scripture for my message today, but also beside me are some Christmas tree ornaments. I once had eight of these and I'm down to three, so that tells you how rough I can be on things. That's why we don't have any nice things at Rudy Acres. Um, I bought these years ago at Silver Dollar City and they have the names of Jesus, all the different names of Jesus on them and some scripture that go along with them, but I keep them out till Valentine's Day each year. Uh, they bring me peace and joy and a reminder of the true lover of my soul. Anyway, before we get started with God's word today, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for who you are. Thank you for the peace that you have brought us through the Christmas season. But as COVID rages across our communities and those that we love, we pray your comfort and your healing. But in the midst of this ravaging disease, I ask that you keep our minds attuned to other illnesses and diseases and heartaches that afflict those we love and those that we are called to minister to. We pray uh, for those that have a hidden illness that we might not recognize and just be with them and comfort them today and call our attention to those who we must serve. Um, we praise you again for who you are. Give us a vision as we march forward uh, toward the year 2021. It helps to be the church that we are called to be and to minister to those. Uh, in our midst, we thank you again for your many blessings, the giver of all things. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, in my New Year's devotional on my blog, if you read that, it's not a promotion for my blog, but it's there. Um, but in that blog, I wrote that the last New Year's resolution I made was in 1998. Um, I'm not a big proponent of New Year's resolutions. They were always just something, another place I failed, you know, an aspiration that I had that I fell short of. And uh, so I, in, at this New Year's that year, I made, rather than a New Year's resolution, I just made a commitment to some things. That year, uh, I was in a deep, deep pit of emotional, I was an emotional mess, a spiritual mess, and a financial mess. And, I, you know, if it was just a horrible pit, it was just piled in on top of me, and this is not an intervention session for Pastor Rooney this morning. I'm just trying to be transparent and testify to you of the goodness and faithfulness of God. But anyway, at the time, I was a believer, but I was not an understanderer. That's my own word, an understanderer. I had made promises to God, and I had bargained often with Him. That doesn't work. I cried out in despair, and then I stomped my feet and screamed, Why me? And then I just finally gave it all up and I gave in. I had mishandled my life so badly. I couldn't blame anyone else for the choices I had made that were hurting me and those I loved the most. But in my declaration that Jan uh, January 1st, I just decided that if God asked me to camp out at the gates of hell for the rest of my existence, then that's where you'd find me. But I knew he would be there with me too. And I dedicated to trust God with my children because I knew that he loved them even more than my all life's giving love for them. Many days had come and gone before I reached the pinnacle of my disgust and what had become of me and my dreams and my expectations. I came into salvation at the age of 12, but I wasn't delivered of my free will and that will's quite strong. I did, however, want to serve the Lord, but I also wanted to serve others and make others happy and pleased with me as well as God. Along the way, I sought um, 
the advice of magazines and articles and friends' advice on friendship and dating, and I looked forward to college and education and eventually maybe having a family of my own. I would often laugh and say, I'll not, have a sec I'll not be a secretary, I'll have a secretary. Well, the greatest hilarity of, about this is that of all the life skill sets that I have, being a secretary is nearly impossible. I'm humbled every time I walk in the office at our local school where I work and have to ask the secretary to help me out of a mess I've dug myself into. And then regularly I'm reminded that I once thought if I got a good education, I wouldn't have to flip burgers for my life, but there I would find myself in the concession stand at the ball games alongside those high school kids that spent their weekends and nights and summers flipping burgers in the fast food industry and I would be flipping burgers too, feeding the masses at the ball games. It's so funny how life turns out and sometimes it was really hard to realize how life had turned out. But back to being a pleaser. I'm small of stature. I'm left-handed, my nose is overly large for my face, my hair in my youth was quite blonde, and I have a horrible gap in my lower teeth that will be there forever because I have a nervous tongue thrust that keeps a permanent straightening from ever happening. Looking at myself in the mirror then and sometimes now, I can only see what needs to be different. And as I grew older from my youth, I was prone to listen to everything and everyone in an attempt to be the best, best version of myself, always trying to be new and improved. After all, doesn't God speak through other people's voices? So when I went to a retreat and the leader would say, oh, we need to be more outgoing and welcoming of strangers and others, the introverted part of my heart would just cringe but I'd try, it would be awkward and most often disappointing. And when the well-meaning sermon was about being more receptive and listening and quiet rather than brash and forward, I celebrated, whew, now I could just come to church and I can just sit and get. But that brought emptiness. I attempted to be Mrs. Cleaver, you know, the beef's mom, but I hate to cook and I prefer messy buns over buffons. And I like the wind in my hair and freckles popping out on my nose in the summertime. But I tried. I really, really, really did try. And then came the soccer mom syndrome. One day the professionals recommended that you have your children on a very structured schedule all day long and, and keep them on a very strict diet and, and sleeping uh, schedule. But then you'd turn and the next professional would suggest that they need no structure or at best less structure. I raised my daughters in the early age of the respectable hover mom, but I assure you it was the only, only the very holiest of spirit-filled women that got the combination of clean and let go correct. I wasn't one of those, and I had come to the end of my best efforts. I was a mess, and I finally laid it all at the foot of the cross, and then I got up and I started walking toward the throne of God, one foot in front of the other, not taking my eye off of where I was headed. And I will tell you those three dedications on that New Year's resolution. I wasn't going to include that because I, I want you to take them in the right context, in the context that I mean them. I'm not preaching anything other than this was what I had come to and I felt like God would honor me in these commitments. My first commitment was that daily I was going to have a devotion with God and I was going to include my children in um, God's Word every day and I did. And secondly, I was going to go to church. Getting up on Sunday morning and wondering whether church was going to be an option or not was taken off the table. If it was Sunday, I would be in the house of the Lord. And other times through the week, I would, would find time to serve and to go to church if the doors were open. And the final thing was, I was going to pay my tithe. In financial insecurity, this was a tough thing to do, but I committed that in worshiping, I would pay my tithe because it was the acknowledgement that everything I had was first God's and then gifted to me. And I was going to honor him 
and recognize that through giving my tithes to sustain the church and its work. Today, I'm sitting before you with this testimony. I made it! <laughs> I couldn't wait to say that. God is so faithful and so good. And I know the very, very best is still yet to come. My scripture on this first Sunday of 2020 is, is from Joshua 24, verse 15. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your forefather served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And I will add, Though no, none go with me, still I will follow. Joshua was one of two people who left Egypt as a slave and crossed the Jordan River into the Promised Land, Caleb being the other. Moses was denied the right because of an act of anger-filled disobedience along the way. An entire generation was gone, but the, new la uh, but the new had walked only with God as their light and law. And now Joshua was their anointed military commander and spiritual leader as Israel settled in the home God had promised Abraham so many, many, many years before. Retaining their religious identity as God's chosen people in the midst of a world that was hostile toward their existence and their God would not be without its challenges and conflicts. The Old Testament's history narrates the tragic consequences of Israel's attempt to borrow culture and religious ideas from surrounding nations, a sin against God's law. But it is also the story of God's relationship to man as man obeyed. Let me take a second to warn you that I will shortly use the word theology several times. In doing so, I am not promoting a denomination or school of thought. Theology is what each of us looks to daily as it is the way that we interpret and respond to God's word um, and God's call. So be as determined as you want against strict theological thought. It is still the gas in your spiritual engine too. While the Hebrew children were in the desert, God gave them his law. We find the record in Deuteronomy, but now we enter into the historical account of man's life under this law. The books of Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings are recognized as a single work written with the concerns and theological convictions of the law in mind. Joshua is the beginning of the theological interpretation of God's plan for his covenant people, where the proverbial road, uh, rubber meets the road. In Joshua's leadership, we see that alliances with neighboring pagan nations was a primary sin against God. This behavior eventually led to the annihilation of the ancient nation of Israel. So let's return to Joshua and the Deuteronomy, Deuteronomistic history that gives hope to those under God's judgment. Destruction is never the final word. God will deliver his people even when the mess they are in is of their own making. There is absolutely no evidence that God ever said, not this time, sinner. This history reveals that the invitation to turn from self-dependency or reliance on political systems and false religions is always open. This is the dominant theology of the Bible. For these newly settled Israelites, chiseling out a covenant community was like re-crimping a crinkled slinky. Furthermore, the continuation of every new generation was ultimately important. Joshua repeatedly connected his generation to the former and the future through the message of God's holiness and uh, reminded them that disobedience has severe consequences but there is always mercy and grace for those who confess faith in God alone. Joshua is probably most widely recognized as a warrior. He led the march around Jericho, and Israel saw miraculous victory after miraculous victory as they took possession of their homeland. Israel's march forward is called a holy war, and it was a take-no-prisoners day of reckoning. This is called a ban. However, realistically, God did give those civilizations opportunity to, to turn from their false gods. The one true God was not a stranger here, and he is never without mercy and grace first. These wars belonged to him, and all that was conquered was his, dedicated to him. Please be careful in referencing these historical times as justifications for today's political turmoils and choices. We are called to love and bless. Personal gain was not the point of Joshua's endeavors. 
obedience was. The book of Joshua is divided into three parts. Israel's possession of the land, the dis distribution of the land among 11 tribes with cities of refuge and Levitical towns set aside to provide residence for the priests. And then the account ends with Joshua's farewell and a covenant renewal. Moses led the people in a covenant renewal before they crossed the Jordan into the land of Canaan. Now Joshua would lead the people in the most important thing they would ever do, worship. In Joshua's farewell sermon, he instructed the people to observe the law and reminded them that it was, God's, that it was God alone who fought for the people. He focused on the activity of God himself in man's history and restated that their very identity was based upon the gracious activity of God toward them. In Joshua's concluding words, he asked the people to commit to faithfulness and reminded them that they are their own witness. But he says, I can't make you do this. It's your choice, your responsibility. But as for me, I will serve the Lord. As this beautiful conclusion to this chapter in history comes to an end, Joseph's bones, remember Joseph of the coat of many colors, sold into slavery in Egypt by his brothers, Joseph's bones were buried in Shechem in the promised land. He anticipated that God would come and then bring his people home and ask that he be returned with them. And so a promise was kept and a nation came full circle. Joshua was faithful, even when it seemed only he would be. There is a song that we sing, I have decided to follow Jesus, but we sing it in a group and we smile. Yes, we have decided to follow Jesus, but there's a final chorus. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Back to me, striving to be perfect everything, searching for the real and original design. Leah played ball one summer, uh, each summer actually, and one night we ended up being batting practice for a tournament team that had weaseled their way into our community league. A summer storm came across Gers Ferry Lake and it began to thunder and rain. The home team coach and his umps refused to call the ball game. Our coach didn't want to make parents and players mad by forfeiting, and so I loudly made the call. I said, when the day comes that you ask these little girls to stand out in this horrible weather and listen to God's word and quote scripture back to us, then I'll let my child play in a thunderstorm. And I gathered her things and we went to the car. Perspective is everything, and this has been my mantra. If I wouldn't do it for God, then I won't do it at all. If it doesn't perpetuate the gospel of Jesus Christ and his love, his servitude, then it is in vain, and only you and God together can make that determination. I must add that I do have church in the rain often, and snow, and thunder, and extreme heat. It's a regular part of motorsport mission, something that God has called Keith and I to. And amazingly, the people do come in all kinds of weather, and they come with open hearts and minds. God truly is amazing, and he always, <laughs> he always makes me answer for my smart mouth. If I ask that anyone resolve to do or be anything today for 2021 or any other year to come, I ask you to do this. Be what God designed you to be. But as for you, serve the Lord. If you are an introvert, remain so. That's part of the tapestry of you that God beautifully wove together. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. If you love people, then God's going to send them in droves. But be the best version of you, and I promise um, that version is going to be even better than you can imagine. And I want you, that great version of you, to commit to serving the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the promise of a new year. But more than that, thank you for the promise of your deliverance and your complete and total victory when we are obedient. Dear Heavenly Father, just help us to keep our eye on your throne and help us to know that though none go with us, still we will follow. Though none go with me, I will follow and serve you.
Thank you. Be with us throughout this week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And now, the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and bring you peace. Amen. You're loved.